Who doesn't dream of the perfect life? Sadly, the real world is often uncooperative when it comes to our dreams and wishes. But if you work hard and persevere, you may not get everything you want out of life, but you can get most things. But working hard? Ain't nobody got time for that. Especially when we could just simulate our perfect lives with tools like the ever-popular Sims franchise. Today we're once more turning to our trusty guinea pig and your favorite infographics staff lab rat as we challenge him to build the perfect life in The Sims 4. And as a special treat, we managed to rope the girlfriend in on it too, whom isn't charging us an arm and a leg for challenges as long as it's just her playing video games. So as far as challenges go, this one is definitely the most mild one I've had, maybe ever. I just have to sit and play The Sims and make a perfect life for myself in-game. It sounds suspiciously simple. I admit, I've never played any of The Sims games, so I have no idea what I'm doing. I hear you can accidentally kill your Sims though? That's already way more virtual responsibility than I'm ready for. So I've been asked to simulate my real life within the game and then make it perfect. The first step was creating my sims, and hey, the infographics tells me that you guys have been howling for a face reveal. Well, sadly, we're just not willing to do that because you know, the internet and the people who inhabit it can be terrible, terrible people. That's why we haven't given our names or social media out. Sorry guys, but just take a look through the comments section and you'll see why we prefer the anonymity of being animated and having a narrator. However, making our sims characters is probably the closest we're going to get to a face reveal, and I'll admit it, I have zero artistic talent when it comes to making avatars. The sheer number of customization options on these things is overwhelming. You can tweak and pinch and pull and stretch flesh every which way to make the perfect look. I saw someone on YouTube recreating celebrities on The Sims, and it was eerie how close they came. I am definitely not on that level, but you know what? I feel I did a decent enough job. My boyfriend's latest challenge is to create the perfect life for himself in The Sims 4, and I thought that sounded fun, so I agreed to hop in and give my two cents. The more I watched him play this game, the more I kind of liked it, so I started playing it when he was not around. For once, a challenge I not only don't mind him doing, but one that I kind of think is fun, beats him having to live off the land in the wild or whatever silly nonsense the infographics has him do next. He created our characters without me, so I got no input on the matter, which is kind of annoying. He gave himself a goofy look, and I guess I see the resemblance especially now that he's grown his beard out, but I still feel his sim doesn't look like him at all. As far as my sim, I really feel like he definitely spent way more time working on that one than his own, which I guess is kind of flattering? I don't know how I feel about that. Have you ever heard of the phrase, uncanny valley? It is used to compare things like robots or animations to the real thing, and there's a place where they approach realism really closely, but ultimately just don't seem quite real and that makes people feel really weird about it. That is exactly how I feel about my sim. Or maybe I just don't like the thought of being recreated digitally. It's kind of a creepy feeling. I do love the dress he gave me, and he tried to dress himself like a total doofus. Luckily for you, the viewer, I made him get some normal clothes too. Though of course he made his character walk like a total creepster. The worst part? He has started recreating that walk around the house, and yesterday he did it in public until I punched him in the arm. I think I have a crush on my girlfriend Sim, which I guess means I have a crush on my girlfriend, which is definitely a good sign. Anyways, I guess there's an option to start, so you're already in a relationship with another Sim. But I wanted to challenge myself, so I made mine and the girlfriend Sims just to be roommates. I'm out to win her heart in Simland and make the perfect <laughs> life, which I really hope is a thing I can do. Like I said, I barely know what I'm doing in this game. I learned the basics from the tutorial, so I know about peeing and eating and sleeping and socializing. You know, all the basics you learn as a baby, which I guess is another thing you can do in this game, you know? Have a baby? That's terrifying. So me and the girlfriend are digital roommates now, and I decided to start with a custom built house that used up almost all of my starting 20k cash reserves. 20,000 for a fully equipped two bedroom house. Now I know I'm definitely living in fantasy land. Also, I totally forgot to buy a toilet for a while, so my characters had nowhere to pee for the first day. My bad. I immediately thought that the little house was really cute. I watched him play around with the two characters, sending them to work and having them make food and socialize, and it was just adorable to see the two as roommates. I guess it reminded me of our first few months together. In fact, this whole experience really gave me a lot of time to think on the past, and it was kind of sweet. We originally met at a coffee shop, which is funny because he hates those places. If you work in the entertainment industry in LA though, it is where you typically meet up for business meetings. I happened to be there on a day off when he came rushing in for a sit down meeting with some random client. I remember he caught my eye because he had brought his dog, our dog now, and he was just a little puppy back then. He sat down on a table directly across from me to my left, 
and apologized to the guy he was meeting, saying, Hey man, I know this is real unprofessional, but I had just adopted my dog and I couldn't handle leaving him alone. He had a real bad time at the shelter. I immediately thought that was the goofiest, cutest thing. Who brings a puppy to a business meeting? And who does it because they can't emotionally handle leaving it at home? I guess thinking back, I knew most of what I needed to know about him as a person from overhearing that one exchange. The person he was meeting with was not as thrilled, and the meeting was over pretty quickly after that, which was the luckiest thing to happen for me because that left us both there alone. That cute little floppy-eared ragamuffin came sniffing over towards me, and the rest is history. If there's anything that feels wrong about this whole challenge, is that there's no dog in our little digital house. So a bunch of people came over to the house when we first started playing the game for a housewarming, and I decided that my sims needed to improve their social life, so I threw a party. I figured I'd see what the sims do on their own, though, and just kind of let them go on autopilot and navigate the party. I guess there's goals you can accomplish and you get scored for having better parties, but I'm curious what sims do on their own. Our first sim party was hands off, so to speak. Each sim did whatever they felt like. Immediately, his sim went to the couch and just sat there reading a book, and then went to my room for some reason and started reading a book there. I cannot tell you how true to life that reaction is. He is the worst at socializing, and when we go to networking events, he likes to plant himself at the open bar until I drag him away. I keep telling him he needs to always meet new people and show his face around so that he can sell himself as a writer and photographer, but he always says, if anyone wants to see my face, they can download my Facebook profile pic. Honestly, he is impossible. Also, I don't know why my sim decided it was appropriate to host a party in her workout clothes. She had been jogging just before the party and then just never changed. That is kind of gross. One thing that was funny though, my sim and another guy sim ended up going into one of the bedrooms for a conversation. It made me chuckle and I asked my boyfriend if he was threatened. Then I reminded him that he still had to win me in this digital world, but now it looked like he had competition. He sort of narrowed his eyes and said under his breath, I don't like that sim. I also realized at that moment that his bedroom had a bed for two people, but mine only had a bed for one person. I asked him what the deal with that was, and he just sort of grinned at me. Wow, someone was really confident his sim stood a chance. So the sim party was a success, I guess. Some total creep sim went into the bedroom, no, wait, sorry, my bedroom, and sat to chat up my roommate slash not digital girlfriend. Who even does that? That's personal space, buddy. Anyways, I thought that if her sim got to have a social buddy, then mine did too. I called over some blonde named Naomi from the party that my sim had gotten into a few conversations with, and we hung out. I would bought my sim a camera, so I took a picture of her, and I don't know if every sim does this, but she immediately struck a pose. I uploaded the photo to my Simstagram and got a bunch of followers. I even managed to frame it and stick it on our table. I still hate that stupid blonde. She knew what she was doing from the start, and who in the world takes a picture like that? A tramp, that's who. Anyways, my sim's career goal is to be a bodybuilder, which of course my dear sweet boyfriend picked because in his words, it was the closest thing I could find to the real thing, and that is definitely not true. I think he was just secretly hoping that it would turn my sim into a she-hulk. So as part of my career goal, I had to take my sim to the gym to exercise there, and I had her hop onto one of the machines to start her workout. Suddenly, this ponytailed guy walked up and started coaching her, and it gave my sim a perk making her workout more effective. I went on the treadmill and he kept at it, although by this point my sim's hygiene stat was getting really low. I decided he seemed to be really interested in my sim, so if my boyfriend's sim gets to have a buddy, then mine does too. I chatted up this sim and the friendship bar filled pretty quickly. Okay, the stupid gym sim. Yeah, that's a case of art imitating life. I can't tell you how many gym rats think the gym is a great place to pick up women, and the girlfriend comes home with stories all the time. Seriously guys, girls don't want to chat when they're exhausted and sweaty. So no, I'm not surprised her sim got hit on by some ponytail gym douche. Seriously, what guy wears a ponytail nowadays? Anyway, the Naomi girl kept coming by the house, which is a little weird, but I guess sims are really friendly like that. Like, two game days in a row went by and she just kept showing up at the front door asking to visit. Turns out my sim's becoming a pretty good cook, so I had him make food for the whole household and push that cook stat up. Here art imitates life again because, spoiler alert, the girlfriend can't cook to save her life. It turns out that my boyfriend is as oblivious in a digital world as he is in real life. That little digital tramp Naomi kept coming around day after day to our house and asking to come in, and of course, he didn't get it. In the real world, I spot when women are attracted to him at social events we go to, and he is always completely oblivious. In hindsight, it did take him a while to realize just how in love I had become with him when we started dating. I decided that our sims needed new people in their lives, as in non-Naomi people, so I organized another house party. He said that I had to invite Naomi because we only knew like six other sims. 
So I agreed, on the condition that I got to invite Darren, the gym trainer my son had met. He kind of got annoyed, but said I could invite Mr. Dumb Ponytail. To pick up his spirits though, I had my sim flirt with him at the party, and I swear his in-game reaction to being flirted at couldn't have been more realistic. He really is as goofy and idiotic in real life, especially in public. Then we let our sims go on autopilot again just to see what they would end up doing. I almost peed my pants when his sim started dancing to the radio in the middle of the party, because he really does dance that nerdy in real life. Then my sim decided to go dancing with him and, okay, my sim is not a very good dancer either, but I swear I am a much better dancer in real life. After our second house party, Naomi came over again, literally like the very next day. I decided, screw it, I'll be a little flirtatious, especially because she was definitely being that way toward my sim. Next thing I knew, we were on a day date, which is totally different than a real date by the way. I had to explain that one to the girlfriend a few times. Day dates are just, you know, friendly, not romantic. Either way, our day date to the museum didn't end up going very well. I guess I told too many gross jokes. Either way, pretty sure Naomi wasn't into me anymore after this date. If he got to go on a date, then I told him that I got to go on a date. So I did. I called up Darren and invited him on a day date, which by the way, is a real date. I don't care what certain people say. We went to the bar slash nightclub and I guess the two sims had a pretty good time. At one point, Darren held my sim's hand. And I know this is not real, but this was the moment that I started feeling really bad about the whole thing. In a weird way, it just felt wrong. I know they are just digital characters, but I could not shake the feeling of gross that I immediately got for this Darren sim. Like any girl, I get propositioned by guys occasionally, and I hate to say it, but this Darren sim really reminded me of the worst type, the overly confident wannabe alpha males. This is the type of guy that wants to ask you for your number when you are grocery shopping and have your headphones on blasting your music. Or the type that when you tell them, I'm flattered but sorry, I have a boyfriend, they respond with, I didn't ask if you had a boyfriend, I asked if you wanted to hang out sometime. Gross. So, so, so gross. Back to our sim life, I called the date off and went home, and then to make it up to his sim, I had my sim flirt with him a bit again. Okay, so things got serious in this digital world when her sim went on a date with Mr. Awful Ponytail. I decided it was time to turn up the heat, I had to win my girl. You can't just jump straight to asking someone on a date though, so I decided our sim should have a friendly hangout, and I took her to the park to play chess. I beat her because I had the higher logic stat, both in game and real life by the way, and then we went fishing together. After a successful friend outing, I knew it was time, so I asked her sim out on a date the next day and she said yes. To be perfectly honest, I was a little afraid she'd say no. I don't know if I could have handled being rejected by my girlfriend's digital avatar, especially if it had anything to do with stupid ponytail face. But no, she did not reject me and we went back to the park for a moonlit stroll and a get to know each other. Then, well, the dialogue option let me try for a first kiss, so I went for it. The first kiss was the most adorable thing I have ever seen. And of course, he had not been taking care of his sim's toilet stat, so as soon as our sims kissed, he ran off to go pee. If you knew anything about my boyfriend, you would know that this is typical. After our first kiss, our sims got flirtatious with each other and after my sim tried to be romantic and hold her hand, her sim bopped mine on the belly and then made a chicken impression. Honestly, this game is pretty realistic. So a few days of our sims officially being boyfriend and girlfriend and they started sleeping in the same bed together, which would have been really cute and romantic if his stupid sims walking animation was not set to being a creepy vampire. The worst part is that he has taken to doing that in real life and I told him that if he does not cut it out, I'm gonna make him sleep alone from now on. Our sims are an item now, so I sold the bed in her bedroom and turned her room into an exercise room. Also Naomi has been calling my sim on the phone non-stop and even showing up at the front door and it's officially all kinds of weird. I learned that you can lock the door for certain sims, so sorry Naomi, but you know, I've moved on. You should too. Also, my sim drew a portrait of the two of us and, well, his art skill needs some serious improvement. I worked on upping that romance stat and knew what my sim had to do next, propose. So I asked her on a date back to where we had our first date, found a nice quiet spot by some trees, and popped the question. Ooh. Honestly, I don't know why I still got so nervous while my sim was going to propose, but I was legitimately worried her sim would say no or something. I'm still haunted by that stupid ponytailed sim. But you know what? She said yes, so eat that ponytail face. Our sims are now engaged, only one thing left to do, a wedding. 
The proposal was really, really cute. I was not around for it, so I had to watch the video of it after the fact, and it was adorable. In the real world, both of our parents bug us constantly about marriage, but especially his mom. We have had to explain to them that we plan on spending the rest of our lives together, but just don't need a big ceremony or a government certificate to prove it. Growing up, I was never the little girl that dreamed of her big wedding, and I don't see what the big deal is. Next thing our Sims did, though, was get married, which again, was really cute. Oh, yes. Except, of course, he picked the wedding venue to be a kid's park in front of a giant toy rocket because, as he put it, you are out of this world. Honestly, he really is an idiot. After our Sims got married, he told me he was done with the job, and I was a little sad to see our time with these two Sims be over. I have really gotten attached to those two, and it has been really adorable watching them go through the stages we went through in our own lives when we started dating. But I was confused, too, because his assignment was to make the perfect life in The Sims. When I asked him, he just looked at me and said, I married my dream girl. My sim life is officially perfect. I know my boyfriend can be a huge goofball and or an idiot occasionally, but sometimes he says things so sweet I can't help but want to happy cry. And most of the time he doesn't even realize what he said, and that is what I love most about him. The sweetest, most genuine things come out of his mouth without thinking, and I know that is how he really feels inside about me, about us. I told him that since Infographics gave us a copy of The Sims for this challenge, that he should not delete it. I think I want to keep exploring these two Sims' happy little married life together. Okay, challenge complete. As far as I'm concerned, I did it. And the best part, I got stupid Jim Douche ponytail face right there at the wedding. That's right, I got the girl. Now go home and cry into your stupid little ponytail. What would your dream Sim life look like? Tell us in the comments. Then go watch Chain to My Boyfriend for 72 hours. As always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more more great content.